is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour Early Edition. Today, Wednesday, the 22nd of May. The Dow closed on uh, Tuesday at 39,872. The futures now are, let me just check where they are. This particular, oh, I typed it onto the chart. Not good. Here we go. Futures are, here we go, trading, uh, just down a little, down 76 at 39,930. Having made a peak D with yesterday's close below the previous high. And uh, we're looking at the E-mini trading right now. That's the S&P E-mini <clears throat> down 850. The mini, e mini had made a peak C1 and a peak C2, hasn't yet gone above the high of, here we go, of the high of, here we go, 16th of May. That was the high of 53.49 and the E mini. Let's go to the QQQ, that's uh, the NDX uh, 100 trading vehicle. That's down two, ten, two ticks at 455.78. In leg F had made a new all-time high yesterday. That's really important. If you look at the semiconductors, they are up right now with Nvidia's earnings coming out today uh, after the bell. They're at 235.50, up 83 cents. If you're looking at Nvidia itself, we'll talk about this in a few minutes. Nvidia is at uh, 954.45. Um, up 59 cents. Now, the reason why everyone's talking about this is really the lead dog. This is the one that really tells the story. The, the, the chips, everything that they've, they've been producing goes towards very important uh, instruments. And because of that, a lot of weight is going to be uh, put on the earnings report and it's really the outlook it's a lot this is a very very optimistic look i'm not sure they can meet all those criteria uh but in the meantime that's the price and the all-time high was 974.00 back the week of the 10th of march and it came all the way down to a round number close of 762 on the 19th of april and here we are at 954 a very beautiful v-shaped uh, comeback and we'll see what happens. The whole thing is going to be with the Fed today. And then you've got so the Fed could turn the market one way or the other. So let's just go to the bonds at this particular point. And this is now, of course, 8, uh, 8 or 8 in the morning. <clears throat> Down a half a point. So those yields have been moving higher. And uh, it's very important to see what the, the Fed, the implication is. I, I don't see any, how they can make any change at this particular point. So status quo could mean that yields are still stuck in this higher range. But if there is a change there, that would imp implicate the market for today. Then this afternoon is another thing altogether because if NVIDIA comes out with a report that is deemed to be outstanding and it screams to the upside <clears> – <throat> And the market's saying, well, wait a minute, we've got, we've got this other, if you weigh the scales of justice on the left, uh, the left side, you've got the scales saying, well, uh, interest rates on the right, you've got you know, semiconductors via NVIDIA. We'll see what happens tomorrow at uh, 10 o'clock. I think by then everything should be settled uh, for directional move. And let us go to the um, to the IWM. It's the IWM. I'll go to that, not the futures, because this this trades as well. This has done 83 cents at 207.51. What's really important about this particular index is it's done very nicely. It hasn't done great, but it's done very nicely. Even if you're looking at the monthly chart, so far, this is a really good candle. We've still got days to go before the end of the month, so anything can happen. There's a V-shaped pattern in the uh, uh, IWM Russell 2000 small caps in the weekly chart. And it's kind of stalled here with a high of 209.77 a few days ago. Right now, it's trading uh, down 
uh, two points from that at 207.57. So another part of the story is gold. So gold is down 11 at 2414, uh, stalled at the high that was made. Uh, it's really a multi-year high just the other day in the 2450s. It's trading right now at 2414. Got good support at 2397. Uh, looking at silver, and in this particular instance, we're looking at silver having been stronger than a chart formation, having been stronger than gold. But uh, what we're really, really looking at is 31.81, down 26 cents here. It hasn't quite made that leg D in the daily, but it is in the leg E in the weekly chart and leg C. Just all of these, all of these stocks are at a particular level, but I also wanted to show you something else. Should I go to that now? I'll go to it right now. You know how I've used the 914 so critically for, for so long. Now look at this. Here's the Dow. Where's the YM? It's the Dow Futures. You see that it's pulled back, but that nine period moving average is a daily chart. And all we're looking at is three lines. Gray line, thick gray line is the price of what we're following. The green line is green because it's the nine period moving average moving above the 14. When it goes below, it goes pink. And I'm suggesting to you that we've got this U-shaped pattern that could turn into an arch if at any point between now and I'll give it all the way to Monday. <clears throat> if the Dow, first of all, the, the key support initially is 39,801 in the futures, Dow futures and 39,000 right here, 39,613. If you go to the Dow itself, the cash, because not everybody looks at the futures, but the cash is saying it's trading, it's close to 39,872, but you've got 39. Uh, 633 as the nine period moving average support and 39,418. If at any point in the next week, uh, now let's go all the way to Friday week, uh, the Dow is below 39,400. That says that we're going back to test the 14 period moving average. That doesn't mean to say the green goes to pink. It'll take a lot lower. It'll have to go almost to 39,000 to do that. So I could do that with each one. I don't want to do that with each one. I just thought I'd use the, the Dow as a benchmark. So now what we need to look at is the bonds. So U.S. bonds are trading down a half a point at 116.28.32. And that's at this particular time. Am I able to move that to the side? Yeah, I think I could. Um, yeah, so at 8.13 a.m., on Wednesday, the 22nd, we're looking at the bonds um, making a peak D in the 118s and now it's at 116, 28, 30 seconds. I'm just watching this very closely because if the bond yields, and I'll go to the TBT for that, that's the ultra short 30 <clears throat> year T bond um, ETF, you can see that it went right to support in the 34s. It bounced quite nicely to 35.49 to the nine period exponential moving average. <clears throat> now it's pulled back. And this is basically looking at yields. And that's just saying that if the yields start to trade above 35.80, that simply says the market itself is still pretty high. That's the capital. the addition. I'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee, so what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, Basil Cameron here, and what I wanted to point out was tonight, today I was discussing, uh, I was discussing the uh, horizontal line that I found, I remember that was in the five minute chart, and I treated a long rectangle formation, I said there's a particular technique that I use, and watch out if the particular line is taken out. And then I said the key support now is going to be at 5334. Well, this morning, the futures <clears throat> all the way at 5349.25, the E-mini futures. And what did they do? They've come back and for a couple of times now over the last uh, uh, hour, they've tested what? The 5334 magnet line. So that's going to be very important today. I just needed to go to uh, right now because I had a question. I don't want to forget about about the IAK. What is the IAK? First of all, you have to type it in correctly. Oh, that's right. I forgot to send off my newsletter. Um, I'll send it off in a few minutes. 116.34 right now. This is the iShares U.S. Insurance ETF uh, making an all-time high yesterday, and it went to 118.17.99. Just missed the 118 round number by a penny, but that is a peak C and that's a leg C, and it should try to go to a leg D. Weekly chart went to an E, and the monthly chart had a peak B three months ago. Two months ago, it had a slightly lower low, a, sorry, a slightly lower high, and yesterday it snuck to a new all time, a very quick B to C. Isn't that interesting? And it should still go to a D over the period of time over the next couple of months. So that's the IAK, and key support now is in the 114 area. Other things I wanted to go through, yeah, you know, it's so fascinating how these uh, stocks have rocketed back. Look, SMI. This is at 907.55. This is a super micro uh, company, cell service, solutions, architecture, high power, AI, computing. Um, had a round number one, 1,229 high back in uh, March, the week of the 8th. Comes all the way down to a 671 round number low on the 21st of April. Bounces sh sharply up into the 890s, pulls back to a 700 round number low, and then bounces again. What's going to happen next? Uh, just a remarkable thing to see these round numbers, the exact round number high 
that means zero, zero, whatever it is, comes down to an exact round number low and then bounces. Just remarkable how that happens. Let me keep looking at this. Um, so here's TSM in the semiconductors. Uh, TSM, I was asked about that. Yes, that is a nice cup formation. You're right, going into the almost like a rectangle with a, with a deep cup formation. It's trading at 156.69, up three. And the all-time high was 145, round number high back in December of 2021. Cascades down to the Chapman Wave two-bar reversal. In the monthly chart, 59.51 and 59.43. Uh, that was in November of 22, 2022, and comes screaming back, goes to an all-time high. And that all-time high most recently was right here. Oh, that's a monthly chart, so that's this one right here. GSAC could very well go to a D, especially after an instant restart. That means within three bars, it went from a D to a higher high. And that was on the week of the 8th of March. Uh, it hit 158.40. It's trading right now at 156.51. There's a chance that it could actually go to um, a leg D. Um, and that's in the monthly chart, Taiwan Semiconductor, TSM. So let's get back to our story. What I want to look at was, let's just go back to gold. Gold trading right now, down 11 at 24.14. I have called this a peak C in the daily chart. It went above that peak E that was made back in um, April. <clears throat> It's a leg E in the month in the weekly chart and a leg B. It's only a leg B. I have to make that blue because the stochastic's almost at eighty percent. So let's just make that blue right there. That's very positive for for gold looking out. Uh, shorter term maybe is a little bit of a digestive phase. Look at silver. Silver's trading right now at um, thirty one eighty two down. 26 cents is the continuous contract. I have this as a peak C. There should be a little pop above that to go to a D. It's a leg E in the weekly chart. Only a leg C in the monthly chart with a beautiful break above that downtrend line. And that's very important. Uh, key support now is at 30, I'd say between 30 and 29 over the next week or two. I didn't give you support levels in gold. I think I did. Uh, yes, it's 2397 to 2383. Uh, let's go to high grade copper, probably pulling back a little bit. Yes, more than a little bit. Peak D formed yesterday and today, uh, three days ago was leg D. Two days ago was uh, a confirmation of a peak D because there was a lower high and a sharp pullback yesterday. It's at 4.37. Uh, is that, oh, that is today. Yep, that's good. So that's today is trading on the 22nd. It's trading down 17 cents at 4.93. And it's a leg D in the weekly chart. Are we ready for some kind of a pullback in these metals? Leg D in the monthly chart. Oh, very interesting. All right, I need to go to GDX. GDX, that's the gold miners. I made a leg D. And then a peak D yesterday with a slightly lower high. The high was 37.47. And that 37.47 is also a leg E in the uh, uh, weekly chart. 37. Oh, no, I can't remember what I said. I think I said 87. All right. Well, there it is. So now I'm also going to look at the bonds. And that's really important. We went through this earlier on. Bonds are now down. Yep, still down half a point. Got to monitor that today uh, within the context of all these different um, um, symbols that we're looking at. Crude oil pulled back again. It's down 82 cents at 77.85. Look how it's hiking this 200 period exponential moving average. It can't break away from it on the upside. That, of course, is going to be very important because if if uh, crude oil pulls back, that's going to help in terms of the inflationary aspect of, of what the Fed looks at. So whatever the Fed says, overall, there have been higher prices. There are some areas that are starting to see lower prices. And if you look at the DBA, which is the DBA Agricultural uh, ETF, which we have, it's a fund actually, um, 
it's trading at 24.18 up 17 cents, but it hit 26. We are, we've been long this for a long time. 26.61 had a, a beautiful leg to the upside, stalled at that peak E at 26.61, tumbles down to the 23s, and here is a 24.0, 24.18, trying to establish some kind of a base. But that weekly chart says that was a very serious decline, and I'm calling this a peak E potential in the monthly chart so that's just saying that the the grains the uh, anything to do with what could be inflationary uh, in the uh, supermarkets let's say where people really see and feel uh, increased prices that's going to be important to monitor and w within that context let me just look at the um, uh, X XLC I believe it is yeah the XLC is the community? Oh no, that's the communications uh, a sector, and that's done very nicely. Uh, I want you to actually look at um, GIS, and we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. Thousand Trap Early Edition, eight twenty-six in the morning. I have to quickly send out my newsletter. I thought I'd done it, but I haven't. I'll do that. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, we're back. GIF is really what I want to look at. Uh, GIS, oh, I hate to have it all not there. I have to do General Mills, uh, Cheerios, Annie's, other foods. 
It uh, goes from the 90 level down to the 60s and then bounces, and now it's at 70.84. I just wanted to see, uh, this is usually the defensive areas where uh, folks go to when they're getting a little bit nervous about um, the general market. Well, that's not happening right here. So I want you to continue looking at, um, what was it? I looked at, oh, E-T-H-E. -E. This is Ethereum. And it's had a spectacular move. It's at 32.98 now, up 22 cents. It went from almost a 200 period moving average at, at about 20. It just a straight, uh, certainly in the last couple of days, uh, from the 23 level to 32, uh, straight line up. Let's just look at the Bitcoin, BTC. BTC uh, was man meandering for uh, about a week. And then it suddenly made this cup formation and soared to the upside. It's up 700 points at 770,200. And uh, so far, the nine period moving average is very strong in the weekly, in the daily chart. The weekly chart's making this M shaped formation, still showing strength. And so is the monthly chart at a peak C. Um, it's still looking pretty darn good, I must say. Uh, the one other question came in that I thought I would get to. Oh, that's right. Toll Brothers. So we're looking at interest rates. Interest rates are moving up. And Toll Brothers, not R-O-L, T-O-L. Gosh, it's one of those days. That's a, and folks, uh, yeah, so for subscribers, my newsletter went out. There was nothing that was so important that it had to get there by 8.30 this morning. Uh, where there's usually some economic news. Um, so I thought I'd sent it out before I did this early show edition. Um, it's now 8.32. So you've got down 72 cents pre-market, 129.50 in Toll Brothers. Well, just a few days ago, it hit an all-time high of 135.37. So it is six points off that. But look at that uh, weekly chart, leg E, maybe a peak E. Look at the monthly chart, leg E. Um, this is fantastic. This is the home builders. So um, one of the issues that we, we, we've got to um, appreciate is that I read something yesterday where it, the discussion was that there has been a pullback in rentals in some areas, not in others, but in some areas, number one. It's the same thing in the price, in the in the sales of houses. But what is very interesting is it's inventory. And really, what's going to happen when baby boomers uh, who are now saying, yeah, I've got this big house, everybody's out, out the house, the family is dispersed, um, I don't need to live in this kind of space. It's wonderful to have it when family comes. You've got all that space to put people up. But at the same time, it's kind of a burden. You know, you've got a roof, you've got this, you've got that. It's always an expense. People don't talk about that in, in um, uh, home ownership. Of course, if you see capital appreciation, that's fantastic. Kind of theoretically, it covers all these expenses. But at the same time, and if housing prices go up, that's fantastic. What happens when housing prices stall? What happens when you've got those expenses, but you are not seeing a, at least a, a mental appreciation of what is happening to your property? So this is going to be the issue. And when finally there's a reason for baby boomers to sell their houses, um, and even more elderly folks who just say, you know, this is, it's cheaper for me to stay than to move anywhere. Um, what's going to happen when that finally goes on the market? You can just have a glut. You can, people don't uh, recall, but some of us have been around for real estate. Where they've been, again, Newton, Massachusetts, the Garden City. Um, I remember a time, I used that uh, to my own benefit, where housing prices were 50% lower, 50% lower. I remember a time I once went to look at a house and the man just, he just gushed all over me. He said, you are the first person to come and see my house for sale. It's been for sale for two years. We haven't seen that for a very long time. It'll be back. It always comes back. When is the issue? So I'm just looking at this. I'm saying, wow, Toll Brothers, Leg E in the monthly chart, uh, Lenar. Where is it? Lenar, right there. Uh, All-time high, 
Uh, no, it didn't get to the all-time high. It's still underneath that for the last three months, just barely. But isn't it interesting? It's trading at 162.71 um, and it made a high of 172.59 back in March. So it's still very close to that level. Um, spectacular move. This is now a peak E in the monthly chart. Is this going to be one of those peak Ds or Es that we're looking at that says, oh, that was a significant top? I can't say. It's impossible because, look, the MACD in the weekly chart is still very strong. Uh, we can go to the XLB, and that's the materials sector, which made an all-time high just uh, a few weeks ago. Up in the 90, let me give you the exact price of this chapter with two bar reversal, 93.72, trading at 92.28. Daily chart is A, B, C, D, E. Um, that's the materials. They kind of go together. Let's look at Home Depot. Home Depot <clears throat> pulled back sharply from the high. Uh, 420.61 was December of 2021. Tumbles down to uh, the two uh, 60s. And then rallies back up to 396.87 back in March. And now it's trading at 336. So that's showing a little bit more wear and tear than the others. Okay, so with that said, uh, XLF, the financials. The XLF trading a leg D in the weekly chart right here. Peak C in the daily chart. Uh, just make that an uppercase there, always uppercase on the way up. And a very quick peak B pulls back and makes a leg C. Uh, and that's all within three months. S&P Select Spider Financial. But now yeah, look at this, KRE. This is the uh, regional banks. And the regional banks, these are the, uh, you could call them small the smaller banks, but some of them are not that small, I can tell you that. But KRE is just going sideways. Had a very nice rally from 45.45 to the 51s, and now it's at 50.52. I want to see this moving much higher in over the summer going into uh, September. I want to see the uh, KRE, S&P Regional Banking ETF, up in the 56 area, it's at 50.61, and trading there and making high highs and high lows. At this point, it looks more like it's going sideways than anything else. So the, the money center banks are doing fabulously. Let's look at J.P. Morgan. Uh, J.P. Morgan pulled back very sharply on the news. Jamie Diamond uh, might uh, retire sometime soon. It went to 205.88, all-time high in leg C in the monthly chart, leg D in the weekly chart, and that's a peak C. But wait a minute. Uh, Bank of America. Bank of America it made a new multi-year high uh, yesterday. It went to uh, in the 39s. Uh, I should mention the BL Long School from 30, uh, 31s. Well, I'll be back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Commission's Hour, and we're at 8.38 a.m. early edition. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. 
a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. We're back from that facility edition on this Wednesday, 22nd of May. It's actually 8.42 a.m. Eastern Time. So look look at this 200 period moving. I'm uh, sorry. Look at this uh, horizontal line that I drew in uh, a day or two ago, and I said that's going to be a really important level to watch. It's what I call the magnet line. You can go higher, but you're probably going to come and test it. You can go lower, then you'll still probably test it. When you break away from it the next time, Sharply, in other words, uh, uh, really at 53.36, you'd have to get to 53.52 to say, hey, this is now not important anymore. Might be later on, but it isn't. And in the meantime, you've got the 200 period moving average in the five minute chart at uh, 53.40. That's going to be the resistance to monitor. And at the same time, uh, what we're looking at in terms of <clears throat> trend. I just want you to go through this one more time. Uh, so even in the uh, clothing area, apparel area, we've got big divergences. Look, here's Lululemon. I was asked about that. Lululemon uh, pre-open is down 14 at 308.76. Look how it made a peak E at 485.83 back in November of 2021. Slums down to 250. Screams back up from uh, the October, I believe it was low of 2022. No, the March low of 2022. And goes peak A, peak B, peak C. And a strong leg D to an all-time high. And what does it do? It goes to 500 and, this is a monthly chart, 516.39. I mean, I just typed it in and show you this, the, the kind of pullbacks that can occur. 516. So look at this. You've got this down here, and it's pre-market. It's at 308. 308, 343 was the 200 period moving average in the weekly. It made a dreaded H pattern. The arch formation fell to the peak A. Now it's substantially underneath that left side low at the 328 ish area. And look where we, we are in the monthly chart. That green nine period moving average could very well turn uh, to pink, very negative. That's little lemon. But look at this. Let's see what happened here in Urban. Uh, Urban Outfitters. Um, Made it. That's I saw that as uh, pre-market is up quite nicely, up a dollar forty-eight to forty-two eighty. Look at this. It goes monthly chart: peak A, peak B, C, D, E, and now it's pulling back very sharply. Um, so I'm watching these, and I was, I was, uh, it's pulled back not very sharply. Daily chart looks quite quite sharp, but in fact, it's really not very much from the forty-fives to the thirty-sixes. Um, and trading right now at 42.80. So they're all doing different things. This is Urban Outfitters. A uh, question came in about, whoops, yeah, could I do, let me do this quickly. ABC, AMZN, 
AM is the end. That's Amazon trading up 95 cents at 184. The 9 pre moving average is so close to turning pink, but it hasn't yet. And the uh, weekly chart has made this little double top. Uh, at 191.70 was the last high. 188.65 was the all-time high back in 20, July of 2021. Slumps to 81, goes to a new uh, all-time high at 191.70 just a week and a half ago, uh, two weeks ago. And now let's see what happens because it's near the all-time highs. It's holding very well. You're going to have to see some really negative news to get Apple much, much, uh, much lower. Uh, uh, um, Amazon, that is. Apple is um, doing quite nicely. It's 119, 192.19. Leg E. See, all of these are in leg D's and E's, really for some kind of a pullback. And that goes for, uh, look, you can go to the S&P. S&P made a peak. Look, there it is. The peak F, a slight pullback. They're already now. This could turn into a wave instant restart. If there's a real strong push above 53.25, 32, the the all-time high of two sessions of yes, uh, of Monday, um, that's going to be very really quite quite impressive. Uh, that MACD in the weekly chart hasn't yet crossed positive back to positive. The stochastic is at 82 percent. We'll see what happens. That's all you can do. Uh, that, uh, let let the price give you the direction. That's important. QQQ made an all-time high yesterday. Look at that. QQQ up at um, 455.58. So uh, uh, even higher today at 455.91 pre-market. Let's see where that takes us. But it's already in a leg F. But there is a chap with inside. I always have to circle these because it's, it's kind of a warning to say within three bars, if it makes a new high off the PD, there's a chance that you can get an alternate count to the upside with a brand new buy signal to buy mode that goes to four higher peaks. I don't do that. I like to say that's a possibility. Right now, we're in leg F. Let's see what happens next. All-time highs. Um, you know, when, when prices get to all, if you look at the stocks lists, the new time highs tend to stay at new time highs for quite a while. New lows tend to stay there for quite a while until it's a significant change. And we haven't yet got there. So I'm just saying, let the price tell you what's going to happen next. A um, couple of things before we go to um, go to our final segment. And I want you to do this because it's, it, it's important in the sense that, look, the IWB is the Russell 1000. It has gone to an E. It's gone to an F. It's even a potential uh, instant restart. So this is the way I'm looking at the market, and that's the reason why I, I, I want you to do the show this morning, even though uh, I wasn't going to, wasn't going to be able to, but I, I managed to do that. Look at this very quick in the Russell 1000. All-time high, uh, as we're speaking, it's at... 291.81 is within pennies of an all-time high. This is a leg F. Maybe it's an alternate count F slash B. Leg D in the uh, weekly chart having pulled back quite sharply. The nine period moving average. Look at this nine period moving average. It just refused to pull back. It is strong. And that's why you have to uh, notate and be prepared. That's the reason why we've just got a little bit of insurance in our portfolio because there could be a turnaround but it's going to have to be a really whopping turnaround to be a sustained move to the downside, not just a one-off. Even here, look, the IWB, to, to get that green line to go uh, pink below the black line, that's the line below the 14, you'd have to see 285, 283, and you're at 291 right now. That would mean that there's, uh, there's a big change in some of the economics that are going on. Now look at the IWC, this is the micro caps. The micro cap um, ETF, iShares, <clears throat> all time high, three highs. This is a, a peak C1, just underneath it was a peak C2, just underneath that was a peak C3. It's almost like you had a, a little, I don't want to draw it in now, but you had a little barrier, a trend line here that was like your Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. And then what does it do? It goes from the 150s, I think it was 158 actually. 159.56 back in March of 2021. It tumbles 
down to the 90, just under 90. And now it's had a really good move. Peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. D, D. Yeah. So really for a pullback, but it doesn't mean to say it has to happen. So these are the micro, micro cap shares. The weekly chart is bouncing off the 200 period moving edge. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, early edition. Be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Final segment, 8.54 a.m. Eastern time. Earlier this will be replayed at 10 o'clock on the 22nd of May, Wednesday. So this is what I'm looking at. 236.99, up 2.32 in the SMHs. There is nothing negative here. Look, the nine, nine period is way over the 14. The bank is very strong. The relative strength is just a little weaker than it was, but it's still pretty good. That's the gray line right there. Uh, most importantly, the um, stochastic, so stochastic is flat at 90%. That is great. On balance of one is giving, uh, sorry, the, um, yes, the on balance of one, the blue line, is giving you a hint that uh, it's pulling back a little bit, even though the price is going higher. Will it test the 239.14 all-time high, or is this going to be a double top where all of a sudden things change dramatically? So here we go. If the Fed says something uh, at 2 o'clock this afternoon and the market pulls back and then NVIDIA comes out and it's just outstanding news or looking what whatever it is, it's interpreted favorably be, be, even after the uh, call, the, the conference call. <clears throat> you can have a big divergence between the one area and the other. But I'm just putting it this way. 
prices. If the SMHs pop and are at 10 o'clock tomorrow are trading above, say, 237.50, that's at, all, that's at a 237.50, that's going for the 239.14 all-time high. We're getting close to that. That is good action. If, if everything turns down and you've got like a four or five point decline in the SMHs, that is be careful. Looking at the interest rates, this is what we did before. It was, it was down a half a point. Now it's still down a half a point. So the yields are kind of in the higher range. If the Fed says something and that the TLT, which is trading at um, 91.16, <clears throat> Drops sharply, goes under 90, 90.70. That's his yields are going high. If it, if it's favorable and the TLT pushes to the 92 uh, area or something, that helps the yields. Just make it as simple as possible. Uh, Dow futures tomorrow morning, if they are down more than 180, that's negative. If they're up 180, that's positive. Keep things simple. Have a great day. Stay tuned for uh, Tommy O'Brien and... Uh, Great program, but don't forget Larry's webinar on Friday, all day webinar. Have a great day. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tiger's Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trade.